Well, hello there, friends and followers. So I've been trying to neaten up my uh, little Drake work area here and uh, try and organize what I've fixed in the past six months. So these are the radios that I've been working on. And I got some of them on eBay because I don't need to have, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven radios. And I think there's one behind me in a box. So there's 12 radios. I don't need 12 radios, so... But if you're going to learn how to fix these things, you have to get radios and fix them in their various states of disrepair and misfunction and figure out what you're doing. So, And that leads us down to the, uh, the TR7. I bought this one basically working. It does work. It does transmit fine. I'm not sure how much power yet, but I have a dummy load here now. And I have a watt meter now, so I'll check it out soon. This one, though, doesn't seem to receive so well. It receives, you can hear things, but the S-meter doesn't seem to move a whole lot compared to these four series. So, anyway, got to look into this one here. I did pick up this speech processor for one hell of a uh, bid of $189, which did not make me happy. I almost wish I wouldn't have bought it. But because in eBay you are bidding against other people, that's a real problem with buying anything cheap on eBay. And that's kind of ruined my Drake experiment, really. But anyway, this I'll probably put into a uh, into a uh, into a 4C, and we'll see how it works. So here's a review. This radio is a T4XC. It's the uh, most recent one that I've I've bought. This one's repaired, except it has a couple of funky. Um, 12x7s, and the problem with a 12x7 tube is the damn guitar people, or whoever people with guitar amps, these 12x7s have become like gold. These are like 50 bucks a tube, 20 bucks a tube. It, you know, it's insanity. A hundred dollars for two of these that are matched. Buying a 12x7 is an entire nightmare, and this thing I think has two dead ones. So, what I did, I bought some tubes from Ukraine. And uh, these might these might prove handy. So I bought these from Ukraine, thinking they would fit in. Well, no, those are not. Those aren't from Ukraine. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I did buy some of these too, which run the relays and the radios. But they are mixers. I also bought some tubes from Ukraine, which are. Russian equivalents of, of 12x7s, but they have six full heaters. So I'm thinking about rewiring this radio to accept those. This has two 12x7s. This one runs on 12 volts, which is what the AC4 power supply puts out. This one, they did some crazy things here. So six volts, they run this one in the six volt mode by using the center tap and the heaters. And this one's six volts. This one's 6 volts, and there's 12 volts. So they put these two in parallel, and they series it with this tube, and that's how they run these using 12 volts, which is kind of crazy, but I would almost want to put a resistor in for each of these and call it a day. I guess that saves power a bit. So anyway, this radio is ready to go, I think, once I get some good 12x7s in it, but I refuse to pay 80 bucks or even 50 bucks for, for two 12x7s. I just refuse, so I, I probably won't fix this radio for a while unfortunately okay and this r4c what's the history of this one this is one that i got a few months ago and this one came out pretty well i think this one has filters in it and i pride myself in fixing these ptos and they're so silky now to use they're just a dream to operate with I pride myself in making these radios as, as collector specific as possible. So that one works very well. This R4C also works well. And the PTO is really, really silky too. So I think one of these is early with, with 6, 6 HS6 mixers. The other one is a later example. So I wanted to own two of these to see what the difference was. And I can't find any great difference. And here is a T4XC. So there are two T4XCs now. 
this one's all fixed up. I wanted to keep one of these to use for a station and put this thing on the uh, T4XC to see how it would work. And there is a TR4. This TR4 is on eBay and it works really well. I had to replace the number of tubes in this TR4, replace the relay. I had to um, replace, uh, what else? A feed through cap in it because the um, BFO would not turn off and that was a strange problem. Here's the TR4 or TR7. The TR7, this thing transmits and receives. It works well. Everything works. I don't think it receives very well. And I know that this thing has pin diodes and it will be a real nightmare to get the receiver working perfectly if it's broken. I'm not sure yet if the receive is just the way it is. I've been focusing more on these uh, four series. Here's a T4XB. This is the first Drake I bought. This guy was like a little rough and tumble radio. This one took me weeks to fix and I finally did figure out its problems. It had shorted coax inside. It had sideband filters that were not attached very well. It had wiring problems. This thing, I think the guy that sold to me from Florida, this thing was like a basket case. And it took me like weeks, maybe a month to bring this one back to life. And it works really well. Um, this R4B, one of these came out of Massachusetts and it needed a, uh, a crystal repaired for the calibrator. And it turned out that it needed a bunch of other things too. I ended up putting caps in the minus 80 volt power supply. I ended up replacing the uh, AGC transistor and putting a few caps into the uh, AGC, ABC, so that it worked right. And the receiver turned out pretty good. There's still a little issue with a ABC off that it should go louder. And it, it, what does it do? It doesn't, it goes softer. So that needs to be figured out. This R4B is marvelous. Um, again, I had to replace the uh, ABC, ABC Q4 in this guy. And that brought it back to life. Actually, I think I, yeah, yeah, this one, this one's really, really good. These are both really good receivers. I would say this one's maybe a little better, but in, in sensitivity wise, they're both the same. They're both really, really good. R4Bs are a fantastic receiver. And this guy, funny down here, is a TR4C. I guess if I was going to keep a, a radio, I would keep um, this TR4C. However, I guess I bought this and I didn't realize somebody had drilled a hole in the front of it for the uh, microphone jack. So I guess a previous owner figured it would be cool to uh, recess the microphone jack that was there. I'm not sure why they did that, but I shouldn't have bought it. Or I should put a new panel on it. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the radio stack as exists today. I also got a uh, spare power supply here that works pretty well. Um, I've been trying to get these parts all straightened out, get the place cleaned up. I've done some cleaning up, but i got to find some shelves. There's the good AC4 power supply that I have, and the power supply for the uh, TR7. And that's about it. So i got to organize these parts, get everything all organized. i got to get a bigger toolbox. But that's the uh, ham radio situation here. And... Still got a bunch of tubes here that I ordered for these. The airplane has to get sent to where it has to go and painted. There's some more tubes. And there's some boxes that radios came in and I don't throw those out. I just keep them as radios may go back out in those boxes. And that's about it. So it's been interesting fixing Drake's. Uh, it has not been profitable, but it's been fun. So I, I look at amateur radio as, as fun. Some people try to profit off it, but I know that most ham radio companies go bust. That's just how it seems. The history of, of say, Tentec went bust. Drake almost went bust. And I think the only ones that make money are the Japanese companies because the Americans buy those Japanese radios. Okay, thanks for watching and have a great day.